Let's take a look at 2022's Best Japanese Movies. Number 10. Love Life. Love Life is a melodrama about the distance between people who struggle to cope after tragedy. Its story follows Teiko, her husband Jiro, and her six-year-old son Keita. When Keita accidentally drowns in the bathtub, the family is left devastated, and must grapple with the difficult decision of whether to focus on the future, or find comfort in the past. The movie explores themes of love, loss, and the importance of human connection. Love Life is a moving, beautifully crafted film that will leave a lasting impression on viewers. The actors have handled their roles well and have chosen and performed them correctly. Overall, it was a nice watch and I do recommend to watch it. Number 9. Intimate Stranger A Psychological Thriller Set in the Post-Covid Tokyo The film follows a woman looking for her missing son, and a shady young man who approaches her, claiming to know her son. Intimate Stranger is a splendid narrative that dares to explore how problematic mothers can be for their children. The narrative reveals how the loving act towards the child can be destructive for its subjectivity, but also how motherly enjoyment and fantasy cannot but reduce the child to a phallic object. The performances were really good from all the cast and that helped the movie a lot. Also, some of the secrets were intense and were entertaining to watch. Number 8. Shin Ultraman. Tells the story of an alien named Ultraman who comes to Earth to defend the planet from cosmic threats and kaiju, giant monsters, working alongside Ultraman or human agents of the SSSP, who must coordinate with Ultraman and get crash courses in extraterrestrial affairs. Shin Ultraman is still decently entertaining for those who simply want a somewhat campy action movie. The cinematography was pretty great. There weren't any spastic unnecessary cuts in the fights. Even in the most boring of scenes, there was always something to appreciate about the unique angles the scene is shot at. This movie is just amazing and treat to watch. Great CGI, nostalgic evil characters and most importantly the direction. Everything was just amazing and really new to watch. Number 7. Wandering. On one rainy evening, a 10-year-old girl was alone at the park. She refused to take shelter although it's raining, and continued to read her book. Her name was Sarasa. And a 20s man called Fumi shielded her with his umbrella and then they both went to Fumi's house. Sarasa refused to leave and wanted to live with Fumi. Who didn't complain? They both done nothing wrong in their two months togetherness, but still police arrested Fumi and sent Sarasa back to her home afterwards. The visual presentation shares the features of the mainstream of modern Japanese drama and mystery which is, simply, pure and natural. Sang Il Lee's drama narrative is, without a doubt, one of the best Japanese films of 2022. Number 6. My Small Land. Saria, a Kurdish refugee girl in Japan, life seems to be looking up. Her grades at school are enough to pursue college, she's surrounded with good friends and her relationship with Sota is becoming special. Saria's life becomes upside down, when she learns that her family's refugee status is turned down, restricting her family of work and traveling across the city. Saria is now suddenly forced into a situation where she is responsible not only for her younger siblings but for her very existence. It was good as a family film and a teenager film. Acting was also great. Everyone acted naturally and was great. Especially Lena Arashi who acted Saria the main character. This film was painful and tough but really beautiful. Number 5. Anpaka. Sarah has come to Japan seeking to buy an investment property and to have a brief and restful holiday after a bad breakup with her boyfriend. Immediately after her arrival, things start to go terribly wrong. Her first night there is disturbing and frightful, the stuff nightmares are made of. Sarah doesn't know is that the house with a very mysterious, violent and unclear history that is somehow connected to her. Anpaka confirms, once more, that Shugo Fuji might very well be the unsung master of contemporary Japanese horror and thriller cinema. With his trademark dynamism, he takes the spectator on a thrilling and captivating journey. Anpaka does not disappoint fans' expectations. It's a scary and surreal worthy rendition of the Japanese horror genre. Number 4. Plan 75. This is a feature film about a hypothetical government program in which elderly citizens are compensated to end their lives in order to reduce strain on society. The movie follows the story of various elderly characters who are faced with this decision, including Michi, a 78-year-old woman struggling to find a job and a place to live, and Yukio, a widowed man ready to join his wife in death. 
it is really good to see a film that addresses humanity and depicts a story that shows humans are more than a right-wing function of GDP and GNP. Cinematography, acting, screenplay and score all combine to make a deeply moving film. This is a rare Japanese movie that avoids so many of the cliches I have seen constantly. Number 3. Just Remembering. A bittersweet love story inspired by a Jim Jarmusch masterpiece, set in times of the COVID-19 pandemic. A former couple remembers their most intimate days, only to part once again. A love story between Teruwa and his girlfriend Yo. Teruwa gave up being a dancer due to an injury. He works as a staff member, responsible for stage lighting. Yo works as a taxi driver. Just Remembering tells the story of their romance in reverse as the couple live apart, separate, fight, live together and meet each other. Movie presents a romantic story that moves backwards, as the first encounter of the two protagonists we see leads to a fight, despite the fact that it is evident that they both still have feelings for each other. The further it continues, the happier and more charming it gets and at the same time the audience just gets sadder and sadder. Some quite beautiful scenes, as the one in the aquarium also add to an overall excellent job. The movie definitely deserving a watch for the performances alone. Number 2. Suzume. 17-year-old Suzume discovers a mysterious door in the mountains, and soon other doors begin appearing across Japan. As the doors open, they release disasters and destruction, and it's up to Suzume to close them again. This film evokes memories of a serious incident in Japan for the present generation, and also allows future generations to inherit those memories. Finally, there is a love story aspect here from which I was moved the least, but I guess that's okay since this is not the main theme of the movie. In my opinion, this film may be comparable to your name. Suzume does not have plot twists that your name has. This film may teach us something necessary to overcome that incident. Suzume is the most visually stunning anime film I have ever seen. I can't overstate just how incredible it looks. Not only is this my new favorite anime film, it's one of my favorite films of all time. Number 1. Love Nonetheless. Koji runs a second-hand bookstore. He likes female drummer Ika, but, suddenly, female high school student Misaki appears in front of him and keeps confessing her feelings for him. When a classmate, however, who is in love with her, learns of her feelings for the bookstore owner, things become more complicated. Love Nonetheless, is a very interesting and entertaining film, and hopefully, a stepping stone. The film also benefits the most by the rather fitting acting. The love chain, triangle that forms the basis of the narrative, apart from providing many opportunities for sex scenes works quite well in entertainment terms, also due to the use of quirky humor here, but also allows space for analysis of the characters. If you enjoyed this video and would like more similar content be sure to like and subscribe. If you have video requests, please let me know by commenting down below. Thank you to everyone that watched till the end and I'll see you guys in the next one.